Welcome to the Stocks Channel. My name is Corey and today's episode will be the first in an educational series right here on the Stocks Channel. Today's episode will be all about how to stay profitable in the stock market using proper risk management. If you want to set up your trading view charts to look just like mine, you can click on the link in the description on the how to do technical analysis so that you can make your chart look exactly like mine shown on the screen. Okay, so the first thing you need to know about how to trade in the stock market with proper risk management is you need to use some sort of charting software. We're using TradingView here and today we're only going to look at SPY, which is the ETF for the S&P 500. So when you look at a chart, you're going to realize that there's a lot of information to look at and you're probably trying to figure out how you know exactly when to place your trades, where to take your profits, and where to exit for a loss. So the first thing we need to talk about to get proper risk management while trading in the stock market is we need to look at proper position sizing. So let's jump over to an Excel spreadsheet that I made and all this is trying to show is exactly how you should properly set up your risk management. In this example, we have an account size of $10,000. Each trade we make is going to use 1% of our account size, so we'll be placing $100 trades and we'll be taking our reward when we gain $15 and we'll be taking our loss when we lose $10. So this right here that you're looking at is a proper 1.5 to 1 reward to risk ratio. So we are risking the potential to lose $10 for the potential to gain $15. The reason you need to use a ratio that has more reward than risk is so that you can lose at least 50% or more of your trades and still stay profitable. So in this example, I've simulated 20 trades and you can clearly see down here that we have nine winning trades and 11 losing trades. So we're only winning about 45% of the time and starting out, this is more than likely going to be what you should expect. Don't just start trading and expect to win 90% of your trades because it's just not realistic and you don't need to win that many of your trades to stay profitable. So in this example where we're only winning 45% of our trades, you can see that our total profit and loss is still a positive $25. Now it's very important when you're trading that you need to take your losses when you do get stopped out. If at any point we allowed these losses to grow larger than the $10 loss that we allotted, we're not going to stay profitable because the times that we're wrong, we're going to lose too much money. So the first lesson in proper risk management is position sizing. You need to make sure that every single one of your trades has the proper position sizing. If at any point I allowed one of these losses to grow too large and let's just say I lose $50 instead of $10, that one trade that I took too much loss on will eventually lose my whole entire profit and loss and I will now have a negative profit and loss. If you take 20 trades to lose money, you are not going to be doing this for very long because you're either going to run out of money or you're going to get extremely emotional and stressed out that you place 20 trades and you're still losing money. So it's very important to not let one losing trade wipe out your entire progress. The other thing to pay attention to is with proper position sizing, you need to be consistent. Every single trade here is with a $100 amount, which is 1% of my account. The reason you wanna use a percentage of your account is because it's scalable. If you're profitable with $10,000, you will be profitable with a million dollars. So for example here, if I change my account size to a million dollars, the only thing that changes is my trade size now becomes $10,000 and my reward and risk ratio adjusts accordingly. So now instead of making $15, I'm making $1,500 and instead of losing $10, I'm now losing $1,000. You can see I can still only win 45% of my trades and I can still stay profitable. So just like the other example, if at any point I let one of these trades blow up my account and let's just say on this trade I lose $5,000, that completely wipes out all of my progress from my last 20 trades and I'm now negative. So to summarize here, the very first thing you want to pay attention to is your account size and understand your trade size accordingly. I suggest only using about 1-5% to of your account per trade, but no matter what you select, just be consistent. You don't want to trade with 1% of your account for 19 trades and then that 20th trade you switch to 5%, get a loss and wipe out all of your profits. The next thing to pay attention to is your reward and risk ratio and starting out a 1.5 reward to a one risk ratio is definitely the best place to start. So that's going to define where you're taking your profits and where you're exiting for a loss. Also only risking 1% of your account allows you to be in 100 trades at a time. The more percent you risk per trade, the less trades you can take and the less trades you can take, the more likely you're going to be sitting there with no cash waiting for another trade while you're sitting in existing trades. So starting out, I suggest using only 1% because that's going to allow you to trade more often and it's going to allow you to get more experience. For example, if you use 10% of your account per trade, you're going to get a lot more emotional when you lose three trades in a row because you're going to be losing a lot of money and you're not going to necessarily get the experience you need starting out. 
When you're risking only 1%, your losses are very small and you can have more trades active at a time, so it's going to help you get a lot more experience. So now let's look at a real life example of trading the S&P 500 SPY ETF. And remember the first thing you wanna do when you're trading is you wanna identify the trend direction and you wanna trade in the direction of the trend. There's multiple ways to do this, but if you watch my video on how to do technical analysis, you can see that we use moving averages and we wanna trade when all of the moving averages are stacked to the bull side. We only wanna take long position trades in a bull market. And then if we also wanna incorporate short trading, we'll only wanna do short trades when we see a downtrend or a bear market. So let's go back in time here on the SPY ETF and we do wanna identify a point in time where we had a bull trend and we will wanna step through the price action until we see all of these moving averages cross to the bull side. So if we go a few more steps ahead, we can now see that we're in a bull market with the 5 EMA above the 13 EMA, the 13 EMA above the 20 simple moving average, and the 20 simple moving average above the 50 EMA. Price action's above all the moving averages and we're clearly in a bull trend. We can also see down here the RSI is above 50, so we also have some bullish momentum in the RSI. So the next thing we wanna do now that we've identified the trend is bullish and the price action is also bullish, is we wanna go ahead and switch this over to a one hour chart. Now in today's example, we will be placing trades off the one hour chart, but you can trade any time frame you want. Today, we're more focused on risk management and not necessarily trading strategy. So now that we know the daily chart had a bull trend, we can go ahead and turn off our indications here so that we can see the price action more clearly. And also remember in all long trades, we're looking for higher highs and higher lows in the price action. So this will help us decide when we wanna place our trades. So in all long trades, we know the price action is trending higher. So we've already identified the trend is bullish and we're ready to start trading the SPY ETF. So we'll go ahead and start running through the price action and we're looking for some sort of higher low formation. So right now we can see the price action is going higher and now we're just waiting to place a trade until we see something that will allow us to have an entry. So here we are now where the price action is starting to pull back and we're getting ready to decide if we wanna place a long trade. So we'll step through this a little bit more to see if price action can bounce off of this low and we can start to see price action trending higher. Remember, we're looking for a higher high to identify a bull trend and we're now looking at the possibility that this could be a higher low. So we'll go ahead and play through to see if we can break out above that high. And yes, we did. So we're going to go ahead and place our long trade. Now, in order to place my long trade, I'm going to be using TradingView tool called long position and you can grab that from over here and then you will want to select on your entry price. So my entry price will be the price action that I'm currently looking at and I'm now going to place my trade and I will want to set my stop loss below the recent low. Remember, we're in a bull market, so we should be making higher lows. So the only way I'm going to get stopped out of this position is if the price action takes out the previous low. So that now sets my risk and that is now my exit strategy. So the next step will be to form my reward, which is going to be a 1.5 to 1 ratio. So I'm just going to start dragging up my take profit until I see a ratio of 1.5. So you can now see that I'm risking 1.5 to 1 and I'm going to drag this out and we're going to step through the price action to see where we're going to take profit or if we're going to get stopped out of this trade. Remember when you're trading and you're setting your risk reward ratios, you will need to have patience because these trades will take time to develop. This is why I suggest only risking 1% per trade because that's going to free up your capital to make trades while you're waiting for other trades to either take profit or get stopped out. In this example, we did make profit and we now have a profitable trade and we're taking profit and we're getting ready for the next trade. So if I zoom out here, you can see where our entry was. We defined our risk level, we defined our reward, and then we just let the trade do its work and we were patient until we either hit our profit or we hit our exit. So now we'll be looking for another trade in SPY and we will need another higher low because remember we're trading in a bull market and we're only taking long positions. We don't wanna buy high, we wanna buy as low as possible. So we will need to step through and wait for some more price action here. So we're waiting for a possible higher low situation and here we go, we're starting to get one. So right now we have the decision if we wanna take this trade or if we wanna see if we can take out this previous high. So this is where your trading strategy is going to start coming into play. But right now in this example, let's just say that we wanna take this trade and we wanna be aggressive. So we'll take another long trading position. This is our entry, our stop is below the low, and then we now need to take a 1.5 to one ratio. So this is now our trade, we have entered this trade, we know our exit and we know our take profit, so now we need to wait to see what happens. So stepping through this trade, we can see that we're starting to make money and there we go, we did get our take profit. So that trade was another successful trade. So you can see why trading in the direction of the trend is so helpful because it helps us define our risk and we know our reward is more than likely going to be favored in our direction because the price action is trending higher and we are taking long trades. 
So we can do this a few more times and step through the price action and again we're looking for another entry. We could see the trend is still bullish because we continue to form higher highs. So again we're looking for an entry on a higher low so we just need to be patient here. So you'll notice while we step through this price action there's no entries that come right away and this is why sometimes you will want to trade more than one ETF. So in that scenario that was a higher low but we didn't know that was a good entry because it didn't come low enough so we're still going to be continued to be patient here. Okay we're starting to form a higher low scenario but we want to see the price action take out one of these highs because a lot of this price action is very choppy. So we're just going to be patient here and we're going to wait to see if we can get a better trade. Okay, so in this example, we did start forming a higher low. We're starting to trend higher so we can decide to take a trade here. So let's go ahead and set up a long trade. We'll enter here. We'll define our risk and we now know our reward is 1.5. So now we have our exit strategy, our take profit, and now we just go step through this trade to see if we're going to get stopped out or make a profit. Okay, so in this example, we did get stopped out of this trade and this is exactly why you need to have good risk reward management. If we didn't know where our exit strategy was, we could have started to lose a lot more money if the market turned against us. So right now, in order to take another long trade, we will want to see price action take out this high and then we can get back into another long trade. So let's step through the price action and see what happens now. Okay, so the price action is starting to break out here. We're still in a bull market, so we want to take another long trade and we'll go ahead and enter here and we'll set our risk below this low. And again, we need to set a reward at 1.5. Okay, so our trade is set up. We know our entry, we know our exit, and we know our take profit. So let's go ahead and step through this trade. Now there is one more thing I want to talk about, which is raising your break even on a trade. Once we start to see a trade going in our direction, we can sell half of our trade and we could then raise our stop loss to break even. So this will guarantee that we make a profit. If we sell half of our trade and we take profit and then we get stopped out, we will actually make money instead of losing money and we won't actually lose any money on this trade. This will limit your upside gains because if we continue to go higher, we would have already taken half of our profit which reduces our total profit, but it's definitely a strategy to utilize if you're not sure if the market's going to continue to trend higher. So in this example where the price action was kind of going sideways, we can change our strategy, take some profit and raise our stop loss. Either way, let's go ahead and see how this trade plays out. Okay, so you can see now the stock market is just continuing to go sideways, so that was not a terrible idea to take half of our profit there. Let's go ahead and let it continue to play out to see where we end up. As you can tell, we're continuing to go sideways, so at any point we could have got out of this trade and took profit, or we could be entering other trades as well. Sometimes this is how the stock market goes and you just need to be patient. So you can see eventually we did get the full profit, so taking half of our profit did reduce some of our profit, but we didn't know that we were actually going to get that full profit because the stock market was going sideways. So this is really all there is to it as far as risk management goes. And remember, this works on anything you're trading. You don't just have to trade SPY, but I definitely suggest diversifying. If every single trade you make is in the tech sector and all of a sudden all of the tech sector starts to sell off, you're going to start getting a lot of losses. So if you're trading an ETF like SPY, you're a lot more diversified and I definitely suggest trading SPY first. If you can get good at trading SPY and you can show you know how to use proper risk management, you'll gain your confidence and you can start expanding from there. Another thing to pay attention to is you don't want to get too confident and you don't want to start scaling up your trades because then if you start to lose, you will wipe out all of your profits. You'll also want to stay away from options trading while you're learning because options have a time decay associated with them. And even if you end up being right, but the trade takes way too long to develop, you can actually still lose money. And it's very hard to control risk when options are very volatile and you could easily get stopped out of a trade that eventually ends up being profitable just because of a little bit of spurt of volatility. So when you're starting out and you're learning how to be profitable in the stock market, you really want to focus on these very core values of taking your risk and taking your reward and staying consistent. If you're not allowing yourself to stop out of trades for small losses and you let those losses get way too large, you will wipe out all of your profits and you won't be trading for very long. So define your reward and risk, know your exit, whether it's for take profit or a loss, and just be consistent and continue to log your trades. 
If you're logging your trades, you can know exactly what your win percent is and you can see which trades are going against you and you can start to fix them. Like I told you, we're not talking about trading strategy too much today, we're just focusing on risk management. If you'd like to see future videos on trading strategies, I can also do that, just let me know in the comments below. Also, if you enjoyed today's video, smash that like button and the more interest I get in this educational series, the more likely I will continue to make more episodes. So thanks for watching everybody. I hope this really helped you out and understand risk management. And as always, I will see you in the next episode.